Boy, this is a big one uh, and, and a thrill for us. We've got with us here this evening Matt Lombardo, who is a Sunday Sunday morning sports talk show host uh, over on 97.5 The Fanatic here in Philadelphia, and also uh, a journalist and columnist for Eagle Delphia. And boy, oh boy, Matt, you've been a writing fool recently. I mean, what, two, three posts a, a day, it seems like. Yeah, guys, thanks for having me on your show. I'm happy to be here. And that's one of the nice advantages of, you know, being over at the Novacare Complex every day. You get a good feel for what's going on around the team. And, you know, happy to be able to bring that to the fans on EagleDelphia.com. Make, you, make sure you want to check in with us multiple Absolutely. times a day because there's always something happening with the Philadelphia Eagles. And we'll be sure to bring it to you. And, and you know, that's for sure because I've been checking a couple times a day. And there are always, there's, there's always a new post up there from you. Uh, one of the things, though, that we got to get into, and you're saying you were over there at the Novacare Center all the time. Well, uh, you know, we've been living with, it feels like, the fans here in Philadelphia have been living with a quarterback controversy, uh, not for the last two weeks, not for the last three weeks. It feels like going all the way back to the beginning of the season. My question to you, though, is do we really have a quarterback controversy right now? Or really, are we going to have more of a quarterback controversy next season? Yeah, Mike, it's funny you bring that up because I was actually talking with a couple of colleagues over at the Novacare Complex today that you think about how many franchises in the National Football League have stability at the quarterback position, and they're the teams that win. And ever since Donovan McNabb was traded to the Washington Redskins on Easter Sunday in 2010, we've really had a quarterback conversation or controversy here in Philadelphia. The the decade plus of stability with Andy Reid and Donovan McNabb, that's no longer here, especially when you factor in Michael Vic and his injury prone nature of having him as your starting quarterback you're always going to have questions always going to have a conversation but I'll admit I was one of the bigger Nick Foles proponents in the Delaware Valley I was a firm believer that he could execute Chip Kelly's offense and not only that he was probably ideal to you know man the ship as Chip Kelly's quarterback given his high percentage of completion percentage ability to get the ball out of his hands quickly but we saw against the Dallas Cowboys Mike and got Guys that, you know, the Eagles don't have one starting quarterback. They don't have two starting quarterbacks. They have zero starting quarterbacks. Yeah, great point. Really came up small in the biggest moment of his career. Goes from a 133.3 quarterback rating against the Buccaneers two weeks ago to last week throwing for just 80 yards and looking very slow to release the ball. Very inaccurate, very uncharacteristic of Nick Foles. Then you have Michael Vick, who ever since that dynamic first half against the Washington Redskins, guys, he's really regressed. He has the lowest completion percentage of passes of five yards or shorter in each declining week since the Redskins, so it's gotten worse every week. Mm-hmm. The fewest completions for third down on third down for first down of any quarterback in the league, and he's just 5 of 19 passing in the red zone. So while it's great that he's back, if he, in fact, is healthy enough to go on Sunday, with Michael Vick at the helm, this team has really struggled scoring. So, guys, to answer your question, not only do we have a quarterback conversation this year, but moving forward, I don't think the quarterback of the future is on this roster right now. Nick Foles showed that last week, and you certainly don't have a future with Michael Vick at age 34 and his declining skill set. So if you're looking for the Eagles quarterback of the future, you're going to have to look to the draft in April. I would agree with you, Uh, but it shut the mouth up of those fans out there that are saying, oh, this is a Foles team or this is a Barkley team, wouldn't you think? Yeah, Matt Barkley, I think it still remains to be seen. I think that his arm has gotten a lot stronger since training camp. I'm at practice every day. I was at every practice during training camp. And recently, it seems like there's a lot more arm strength than we've seen at any point since he was the fourth-round pick of the Eagles. I think a lot of that goes to show with the shoulder being healthy. But he was in a really tough spot against the Cowboys on Sunday, brought in at the start of the fourth quarter. Basically, it's the two-minute drill on every play. They're forced to throw the ball in every possession. He didn't really get in any first team reps. I think if you want to see a true resemblance of what Matt Barkley can be, the only way you're going to see it moving forward is if Michael Vick takes that 100-yard dash that he's putting himself through tomorrow and realizes he's not healthy enough to play. And then you have a Barkley going in the game Sunday who's been warmed up with first-team reps all week, prepared to be the starter. That's where you'll get a true sense of Matt Barkley. And I still, guys, think you will see Barkley later in the year, whether it's because Michael Vick gets hurt or in December the Eagles are so far out of the division race, which is still a possibility that they'll evaluate Matt Barkley in the final three or four games just to get a truer sense of what they 
they really need in the draft if they really do need to pick a quarterback. Because, right. guys, remember, Chip Kelly saw him a lot at USC, and he did draft him. That's mm-hmm. where – you know, Matt Barkley yeah. has an advantage over Nick Foles that Kelly did use a fourth-round pick and traded a seventh-round pick to bring him here. Right. And a good team to start off against, against the Giants, yep. if, if Barkley gets the gets to start this week. Right. You know? Right. Uh, so. it, it, one of the questions, though, that I've got to bring up, and you, said, you, you just said, Matt, you know, we really haven't seen the kind of things from uh, Vic that we saw in week one. And I think that kind of goes right, to, uh, sidekick, to a question that you had with right. regard to the coaching. Well, it's the same, same question I've had all year. You know, is this Chip Kelly experiment going to work? Yeah. I mean, is this a flash in the pan for one year? Or, you know, is he going to be, are the players going to be able to keep up with this tempo of a, uh, offense? And is this really going to shock the rest of the, the rest of the division, right? Or are people going to key on to it? And next year, it's you know, it's, well, as you say, a flash it, in the pan. It, and, and Matt, you're bringing up. I mean, you know, hey, we've seen Vic decline, but also as fans, we've seen that whole offensive fast pace scheme decline. And I'm wondering whether this is this is actually management driven, not necessarily player driven. Well, I think that when you look at Michael Vick as a quarterback, he's never been a quarterback that has won a lot. In this league. He's always had a, done a very nice job of winning a starting job, but his numbers throughout the course of a season, even going back to 2010 when it was the MVP runner-up, mm-hmm. there was a sharp drop-off in December. But as far as Chip Kelly goes, I think that still remains to be seen because there's a, a faction of people who think that within three years when the show cause memorandum on hiring Chip Kelly at the NCAA level is lifted, that he'll take the first, the first plane to Austin, Texas, or mm-hmm. Tuscaloosa, Alabama, or Southern California. But there's also the part that $6 million a year is a lot of money to walk away from. And you have to remember, Chip Kelly's an ego guy. He might not have won the national championship at the college level, but he's been to the national title game. He's won bowl games. He's succeeded there. And I think that he's really made an attempt to put his stamp on the National Football League. Whether that works in the long term, that remains to be seen. I think we have a truer sense of Chip Kelly once we see a couple of draft classes, a couple of free agency classes that come through where he really builds his team with the type of talent that he needs to run his scheme. And as far as the players' health is concerned, guys, I was thinking about this earlier today. You only had two players, and Jake Knott and Nick Foles not practice today. And we're seven weeks into the NFL season. You look around the landscape of the National Football League, it's very rare that 51 of 53 players are practicing and healthy this late in the year. So I don't think that the players declining or not being able to keep up with the speed is an issue. I think it comes down to how well is Kelly going to just moving forward. It's and that's the smoothies, a- man. It's the smoothies. Heart monitors, all that new wave. <laughs> uh, you brought up something, and that is uh, the draft. You also said that you did not think that there is a, you know, uh, a franchise quarterback on this team right now. A lot of people are saying it would be a disservice to the Eagles to win too, too many games. Hey, do we just throw this season or do we fight to make it respectable? No, I, I think that throwing the season, that might work in basketball where you're trying to influence the lottery. and it, it, Like the Sixers this year, it's right. hard to go from a team that's in purgatory year in and year out and never get better. But in the National Football League, I think if you have the opportunity, especially for a new head coach and a franchise that hasn't seen the postseason in three years, it's been a long time since there's been a winning culture here in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. It's a division where the Eagles right now are only two games out one game in the standings and one game head-to-head against the Cowboys. I think if you're Chip Kelly, if you're the Eagles franchise, you put the pedal to the metal, you try to win the division, and and guys, you can fight for this division with Matt Barkley or Nick Foles under center, and you can evaluate those young players if that's what you're trying to do. And at the same time, we've seen your St. Louis Rams give up a bounty to move up in the draft and pick Sam Bradford. We've seen the Washington Redskins make a trade with your Rams to move up and draft Robert Griffin the third. We've seen the Atlanta Falcons give up two first round picks and some other players to get Julio Jones. So you can put together a package of players, be it Deshaun Jackson, who's in technically the final year of his deal, and a couple of draft picks or two or three first rounders to move up and get your quarterback, be it Marcus Mariota 
know, Teddy Bridgewater or whoever you're drafting. So if I'm the Eagles, I'm looking to win the division, and I'll handle the draft however I need to. But real quick, Matt, we need a heck of a lot more than a quarterback, and that's why I'm not sure if I'm so happy packaging up a whole bunch of draft picks to just try to move up. If we go with the philosophy you're saying where we fight to stay in the division and we end up, say, with a eight, uh, you know, a 500 uh, season, 8-8, eight and eight, we're going to end up in the mid-pack. That's not going to get us a top-ranked quarterback. And uh, I don't know if we want to give up that many draft picks. Jackson, who, who has what? shown that he can be a number one receiver in this league, and the Eagles structured his contract so it's easy for them to get out of at the end of this year anyway. You package it to Sean Jackson, your first round pick, maybe a first rounder in 2014, maybe a second rounder. That'll get you up in the top five. That'll get you in the area of a Mariota, a Bridgewater, a Manziel, or, or somebody of that nature. Right. You can find a way to move up. But again, I think that if you're Chip Kelly, your first year with all of these new innovations, the nine hours of sleep a night, the smoothies, you want to show that that program can work and you want your locker room to stay bought in moving forward. All right, Matt. Thanks very much. We appreciate you being here with us. We want everybody to get over to eagledelphia.com. Check out Matt's three, four posts a day. He's up there all the time and you're going to get all the latest news. Uh, I have a whole load of other things I want to get to, Matt. Got to get you back. Hey, happy to do it. Thanks for having me on the show. Thanks very much.